Hello and welcome to the Mail in a Box Setup Guide. Mail in a Box helps you take control of your email with an easy to deploy mail server in a box. This video tutorial will walk you through the same instructions that are found in the Setup Guide on the Mail in a Box website. This will take you an hour or two. Let's say that I want a new email address for myself, say me at joshmail.xyz. I'm going to need a domain name, that's joshmail.xyz, and a server. Mail in a Box configures that server so that it provides email server functionality including support for mobile devices, webmail, a spam filter, and other protocols needed for mail delivery. Please go through the pre-flight checklist on the website. Getting a domain name and a server costs about $12 per month. If you have a website or a web server already, or if you want to tinker with the system after setting it up, please consult the website. Your first task is to choose a domain name. The part after the at sign in an email address is a domain name, and you'll have to buy anything that you want, if it is available. You can buy whatever domain name you like, except that every domain name ends in a top-level domain, or TLD. .com is the most famous TLD. There are about 900 of them, and .xyz in my example is actually one too. TLDs aren't all the same, though, so please be mindful of the cost, legal requirements, and technical limitations that might apply to the particular TLD that you choose. The next thing you need to know is that your server is going to have a name. Its name should be box plus a period plus your domain name. In this example, the server's name will be box.joshmail.xyz. This is also going to be the address on the web for your mail services. Let's get started by buying a domain name. Go to gandhi.net, which is my favorite domain name registrar. Check if the domain name you want is available. I'm checking joshmail.xyz, and in fact, it is available for $5 per year. In order to buy this name, you're going to have to create an account at Gandhi. You'll have to tell Gandhi whether you are buying the domain name as an individual or as a company, and then you're going to enter your name and a password. This password will give access to your domain name, so choose something long and secure. You'll also have to choose a security question, and again, choose something you can give a long and complicated answer to. Your favorite food is a good question to choose here. Down at the bottom, you'll have to enter an existing email address you have. That might be your Gmail address. Make sure that address remains secure as well, because anyone with access to your old email will get access to your Gandhi account. Then turn off the newsletter, turn on the anti-spam system, and private domain registration, and turn off reselling of your data. Agree to the contract and click Submit. There are some technical details that Gandhi will review with you first, including the contacts for the domain name and its DNS settings. There is nothing for you to do here, though. You'll change the DNS settings later. At the bottom of the page, agree to the contract. If there's a special contract for the TLD you chose, do review it and make sure your intended use of your domain name complies with the rules for the TLD. Gandhi will show you at the top that it's working on your order. Then go through payment. I already have a Gandhi account, so I'm going to skip ahead here. Once you get inside your account, you might see that your order is still in progress. But once the order is ready and this list is empty, you can head over to the Services tab and your domain name will be there. Click the domain name to go to its control panel and look it over to make sure the information you've entered so far is correct. The next step is to get a server. Head over to digitalocean.com, which is my favorite place to get a new server. You're going to have to create an account here also. Again, use an existing email address that you have, like at Gmail. I already have an account at DigitalOcean, but you'll need to confirm your email address and enter your billing information before you can go forward. Once you've got that done, you can create a droplet, which is what DigitalOcean calls a server. First, choose Ubuntu 14.04 x64. That's the only platform that Mail in a Box supports. You also must choose the $10 size or bigger. The $5 size just isn't powerful enough for mail. Choose the region that's closest to you so your server is most responsive. Then turn on backups, which will increase the cost a little bit. You can turn on IPv6 if your region supports it, but don't if you don't know what that is. Then you need to add an SSH key. This is like your front door key, and it's what gives you administrative access to your new server. 
In order to create a key, you'll need to get to a terminal. This is how you get to a terminal in Ubuntu Linux. It's similar on a Mac, but unfortunately totally different on Windows. Open up a terminal, and then you'll just have to follow along with these commands to create a key, which is actually a pair of files. Type in ssh-keygen-t rsa-b 2048-capital C and then some name for yourself. Hit enter a few times to accept the defaults for the questions. The first file this command creates is called the private key and it's stored on your hard drive in the location I'm going to highlight in a moment. Never share this file. Don't copy it. Don't give it to anyone. The second file is the public key. It goes hand in hand with the private key, but you do give it to other people so that they can identify you. I'm highlighting the location of the public key file on your hard drive. Copy the location to the clipboard and then type cat space and then paste the location of the public key file and press enter. The terminal will then show what's inside that file. It's random text that identifies your private key but doesn't actually have your private key in it. Copy the public key to your clipboard and then switch back to DigitalOcean. Paste the public key into the box there, label it so that you remember what computer the key it sto is stored on, and then click Add SSH Key. Enter the host name for your server that we discussed earlier. In my case, that's box.joshmail.xyz. Then click Create. DigitalOcean is now going to spin up a new virtual server for you in its cloud. The server will be turned on all the time, waiting to send and receive mail for you. This step takes about a minute, and I'm fast forwarding ahead in the video. Once it's finished, go to the control panel for your server. Copy the IP address of your server to the clipboard. It's at the beginning of the line here. And then head back over to Gandhi and scroll down on your domain name control panel. Click on Glue Record Management. Scroll down and for name, type in ns1.box. That stands for Name Server 1, and this is a subdomain of your domain name. Paste in the IP address of your box. Operations on Gandhi take a few moments to go through, and while that's happening, we'll add a second glue record. This time enter ns2.box and place, paste the same IP address again. If you ever add other domain names to your server, you do not repeat this part. Once the glue records are in, head back to the main page. Your server can host mail for more than one domain name, and if you register more domain names later for use with your mail in a box, you will have to do this next part for each domain name. Go to Modify Servers, and enter ns1.box.joshmail.xyz and ns2.box.joshmail.xyz, replacing joshmail.xyz with your domain name, of course. If you're repeating this step later for a second domain name, you'll type in the exact same name servers again. You don't change it to be ns1.box.yournewdomainname. Now go back to the terminal and we'll log into your new server. Type in ssh root at and the IP address of your server. If you're concerned about security, you may want to confirm the host key fingerprint. And I'm showing in the little pop-up what to check it against at DigitalOcean. Either way, type in yes and press enter. From here on, you're typing commands directly into your server in DigitalOcean's cloud. Now, head to the Mail in a Box website to grab the installation command. Look for the command that starts with curl and ends with bash. Copy it to the clipboard and paste it into the terminal and press enter. This starts the real Mail in a Box setup. Mail in a Box is going to download software and configure your server so that it becomes a mail server. It will ask you a few questions. First, your email address. 
You can edit your email address at this point, but don't change the domain name. It will then confirm the server's host name and just press enter unless it's wrong, in which case do fix it. At this point, it's updating some system software before it asks some additional questions. Now it asks for your location, and that's to set the server's time zone. Use the arrow keys on your keyboard to navigate these fields. Your mouse probably won't work within the terminal. Press Enter to accept a time zone after you select it. This next part takes about five minutes, and I'll speed this up in the video so that we can get through it quickly. Mail in a box itself is mostly just system configuration, pulling in other people's software and configuring it, and that's what it's doing now. At the end of the installation, it will ask you for a mail password for checking your new mail account in webmail and on your devices, and for access to the server's own mail in a box control panel, which you'll see in just a moment. Choose a secure password and enter it twice. It now gives you instructions for the next step. Copy the new control panel address and open it in your web browser. Because your DNS may not be working yet and you don't have a TLS certificate yet, the can connection can't be verified as secure, although it probably is. If you are concerned about security, compare the, the SHA-1 fingerprint of their certificate here with their fingerprint printed in the terminal at the end of the mail in a box setup. Then confirm the exception and log in to your mail in a box. Use your new email address and the new password you just entered a moment ago. It will start you on the system status checks, which check that the box has been configured correctly so far. And at this point, you should see exactly what I have here. We'll come back to the issues at the top later, but the green lines and check marks indicate that you are almost done. If your page doesn't look exactly like this, wait 20 minutes or so and then reload the page. DNS changes can take some time to take effect. There's an optional step that we're going to do now. That's DNS Sec Setup, which adds enhanced security for DNS. Expand the DNS Sec information and copy the DNS Sec settings into the Gandhi control panel under Manage DNS Sec. Change the flags and algorithm here to match what the status checks tell you to use. It's not necessarily what's shown in this video. Then paste in the DNSSEC public key from the control panel and click Add. It will take a little while to go through. This and anything related to DNS could take up to 30 minutes to update. At this point, if anything is read in the mail in a box status checks besides the one shown in this video, you'll have to wait until DNS updates. Wait a while, then reload the status checks page. If you like, turn on the new version check so that you get alerted to new versions of mail in a box when they become available. The next issue in red is that we need to provision a TLS certificate. TLS certificates ensure that connections between you and your server and between your server and other mail servers are secure. Head over to the TLS certificate section of the control panel. Your server's host name and any related domains it's configured should be listed next to a provision button. Click it. Then review the terms of Let's Encrypt, the free TLS certificate provider that Mail in a Box uses. When you've reviewed the terms, click Agree and Try Again and wait for the certificate to be ready. Then click Finish. Because we've just installed a new certificate for the page we have open in the browser, your web browser may get confused here. But now that we have a certificate and DNS is working, we can open up the control panel at https colon slash slash box.joshmail.xyz slash admin. Log in again. It will run the status checks again, and now the TLS certificate lines will be in green. Everything looks good here, except for the issue at the top, which is okay for now. Check out the rest of the control panel for instructions on setting up backups. 
and setting up your devices for mail. We also have webmail and you can use your new email address and password for that. Here I'm going to test that out by sending myself an email. Back in the control panel there are additional mail instructions. You can also add other users to your server so that they can have their own mailboxes too. Aliases are like forwarders. And you can also store your contacts and your calendar on your server and have it synchronized with your devices. Those instructions are in the control panel as well. You log into that the same way as everywhere else here. And if you create a contact here, it will synchronize to your phone if you set up your phone following the instructions back in the control panel. Your machine is also serving a website and you can upload static files, HTML files, and images following the instructions here. That'll replace the default page that comes with the box. Lastly, I want to show you how to reboot your machine and how to log back in with SSH later, like when there's an update to Mail in a Box. In the terminal, type reboot. It'll log you out, which means that you're now typing commands into the computer you're actually sitting in front of. Wait a few moments while your server reboots, and when you think it might be online again, type the SSH login command again to get back in. Now that DNS is working, for all future logins you can use your server's hostname, like box.joshmail.xyz, in place of the IP address we used last time. It'll ask us to confirm a fingerprint like earlier in the video. If something ever goes wrong during mail in a box setup, just type mail in a box in the terminal, while logged onto your machine, to run the mail in a box setup again. And type log out to log out of your machine without rebooting it. And that's it. Check the setup guide on the Mail in a Box website for anything I may have missed in this video. There's also a link there to the discussion forum if you have any questions. Follow Mail in a Box on Twitter for important announcements. And for more security, turn on two factor authentication at Gandhi, DigitalOcean, and at your old email provider if possible. Now get mailing.